All right. Good morning, everyone. Uh, this morning, I'll be reading Matthew chapter 1. Matthew chapter 1. We've got, um, of course, our focus this morning is on uh, the birth of Christ. And uh, this chapter has um, two different topics, but they're basically the same. There's a genealogy that is in the beginning of this chapter. And then the second part of the chapter is uh, the story of um, the angel telling Joseph that Mary is going to have a baby. And it'll be uh, the virgin birth. It won't be from him. It'll be from the virgin birth, the Holy Spirit. And uh, he wanted, of course, in that story, to when he found out she was pregnant, and uh, he wanted to divorce her so that she wouldn't uh, be embarrassed or ashamed of being pregnant before they got married. And the angel has to come and tell him, relax, this is all part of the plan. Um, so uh, that's what the second chapter is. I'll talk about that, or the second half of this chapter. I'll talk about that in a second. But I want to talk about this genealogy at the beginning of Matthew. And in this genealogy, um, we've got... Um, this one goes, uh, Matthew's genealogy goes from Abraham down to Joseph, and it explains and establishes Christ's kingship. It's a, a genealogy that goes through Joseph's line. There's another genealogy in Luke, and it goes um, from, it's Mary's line, and it goes um, uh, from Adam back, back to the Lord Jesus Christ. To the Lord Jesus Christ, I got that backwards, it goes from the Lord Jesus Christ back to Adam. So the two genealogies I put up on the screen, I don't know if that's easier to read and see, or is it this one? But you can see the list there, um, and that's how it works out. It's a great study, and I want to talk about a little bit about it uh, as we go through this. Um, in verse 1, it reads, the record of the genealogy of Jesus the Messiah, the son of David, the son of Abraham. So you can see um, that this particular genealogy uh, hits Jesus Christ as the one who fulfills the covenants to Israel. Um, this book, Matthew, is written to the Jews. There's a couple other books written to the Jews, um, Hebrews, James, First and Second Peter. But this book of Matthew uh, presents Jesus Christ as our King, as the Savior and the Messiah. And that applies not to us, but also to the Jews, of course. I just said that. It's written to the Jews. Okay. <clears throat> so um, the genealogy here that we're going to see shows how Christ qualifies to be the Messiah because he's tied to the Old Testament covenants and he has the legal right to the throne because he's in the line of Abraham and David. Um, we're going to notice in this uh, genealogy, there's women included. There's five of them in here. Um, and this is to show us that God's plan is not just limited to men. We're going to see these uh, five women. That's another great study, by the way, to take each one of those women and look through in the scriptures, who they were and what they did. Um, very interesting study. And and you would ask, why are they even in there? Um, after you read about some of them, they're not the greatest women ever, but uh, some were, but not all of them. And you wonder, why are they in this list? Well, because God put them in there. This is his list. Okay, um, verse 6 I wanted to point out. It says, David was the father of Solomon by Bathsheba, who had been the wife of Uriah. You will remember this story. Um David put Uriah, well, he was, David was out on his balcony watching Bathsheba uh, sunbathing, and uh, he decided he wanted to marry her, but she's already married. So he takes Uriah uh, and puts him at the front of the battle where he will be killed. So now that he's dead, um, David's free to marry Bathsheba. That's a great uh, verse or story when you're witnessing to someone and you get into the issue of sin, and they think sins are 
on a, on a level, you know, there's some worse than others. And murder, of course, would be the very worst. And you can't go to heaven if you murdered somebody. Well, David did. And he murdered somebody. And there it is. You can use that verse for that. Okay. Um, anyway, that's, uh, that's verse 6. Verse 12 mentions, um, after the deportation to Babylon, well, we've been reading about that in Daniel, and of course the other minor prophets. Um, Daniel was part of that deportation that went to Babylon. But the verse says, after this, Jeconiah became the father of Shealtiel, and Shealtiel was the father of Zerubbabel. I want to read a little bit about this because Jeconiah uh, was also known as Coniah, and he had a curse on him that God put on his family. And, and I want to read that. I'm going to be reading out of Jeremiah 22. I don't know if you want to follow along, but I've got six verses out of there, starting in verse 24. So Jeremiah 22, 24. God has removed Jeconiah from the lineage or the line of the kings. And he'll say, your family is not going to be part of this. So as I read in Jeremiah 22, <clears throat> beginning at verse 24, As I live, declares the Lord, even though Coniah, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, were a signet ring on my right hand, yet I would pull you off. I will give you over into the hand of those who are seeking your life, yes, into the hand of those whom you dread, even into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and into the hand of the Chaldeans. I will hurl you and your mother who bore you into another country where you were not born. That would, of course, be Babylon. And there you will die. But as for the land which they desire to return they will not return to it. That would, of course, be Judah. This man, this, is this man, Coniah, a despiser, a shattered jar, or is he an undesirable vessel? Why have he and his descendants been uh, hurled out and cast into a land that they had not known? Land, O oh land, land, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, write this man down childless, a man who will not prosper in his days. For no man of his descendants will prosper, sitting on the throne of David or ruling again in Judah. Quite a curse on the guy, for sure. And then um, uh, we'll also gonna, I'm also going to read a little bit that shows us <clears throat> that, um, wow, that uh, um, the curse will be broken. And I'm going to read that out of Haggai in just a minute, as soon as I get there. Um, and it says in Haggai, this is reversing the curse, by the way, the curse of Coniah. On that day, declares the Lord of hosts, I will take you, Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, my servant, declares the Lord, and I will make you like a signet ring, for I have chosen you, declares the Lord of hosts. Okay, that's verse 12 of Matthew chapter 1. And that uh, shows us how the curses will be broken. Moving down to verse 16. Verse 16 says, Jacob was the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary, by whom Jesus was born, who was called the Messiah. You'll notice in the other verses that precede this, in fact, in the old King James, it was so-and-so begat so-and-so, he begat so-and-so. And that's what's happening here in Matthew 1. Until you get to verse 16, it doesn't say Joseph begat Jesus. It says Joseph, the father of, or excuse me, the husband of Mary. A little different. And if you remember your, uh, your 10th grade high school biology, you know that the old sin nature comes through the man. No? Yeah, you all remember that? <laughs> Maybe it wasn't in yours. Um, but that's the, virgin, that's the reason for the virgin birth. Um, if Joseph was the biological father, then Christ would have been born with an old sin nature. And we can't have that, of course. So that's why the virgin birth was necessary. And that's what we see here in verse 16. <clears throat> okay. 
I want to talk about the second half of the chapter quickly. This is the um, uh, uh, angel talking to um, Joseph, and it's not changing screens. Do you know why, Jesse, it's not working? Is it because of your computer? Cursed. It's cursed. It knows you're afraid. <laughs> Wow. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Um, <clears throat> so um, as we're going to go through the second part of the, of the chapter, um, talking to uh, Joseph, it's the angel Gabriel who comes to talk to him, to tell him to relax. It's all going to be okay. <clears throat> and Mary is also told she's going to have a son named Jesus. Verse 21 says, this is the angel talking to Joseph, she will bear a son and you will shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. When I go over to Luke um, chapter one, if you want to turn there too, I'm going to read a few verses out of Luke chapter one, starting at verse 26. And as I read this, you'll see this is uh, how Mary is going to hear about this. It says, now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph and of the descendants of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And coming in, he said to her, greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was very perplexed at this statement and kept pondering what kind of salutation this was. The angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. So I've mentioned this before, but you're all familiar with the song, Mary, Did You Know? And yes, she knew because she heard it uh, from the angel. And I'm also going to read uh, two more verses out of Isaiah about this. But yeah, she knew. She knew all about it. So uh, Isaiah, <clears throat> these are our primary verses, by the way. Isaiah 7, 14 reads, Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, a virgin will be with child and bear a son, and she will call his name Emmanuel. And then in chapter 9, verse 6, for a child will be born to us, a son will be given to us, and the government will rest on his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. All right, back to Matthew 1. One more drink of water, and I'll start reading. <clears throat> okay, Matthew 1.1. 1, 1. Oh, by the way... Um, I wanted to put the verses up there again. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. And I've got another uh, same verse up here, a little different picture of the nativity. And by the way, this last one, which you cannot read, but if anybody wants it, I can send it to you on a text. But it's the entire chapter of Matthew, uh, really cleverly uh, shaped in the Christmas tree. And um, I thought that was pretty cool, too. Okay, here we go, Matthew 1.1. 1, 1. The record of the genealogy of Jesus the Messiah, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham was the father of Isaac, Isaac the father of Jacob, and Jacob the father of Judah and his brothers. Judah was the father of Perez and Zerah by Tamar. Perez was the father of Herzon, and Herzon the father of Ram. Ram was the father of Aminadab, Aminadab the father of Nashon, and Nashon the father of Solomon, or excuse me, of Salmon. Salmon was the father of Boaz by Rahab. Boaz was the father of Obed by Ruth, and Oban the father of Jesse. Jesse was the father of David the king. David was the father of Solomon by Bathsheba, who had been the wife of Uriah. 
Solomon was the father of Rehoboam, Rehoboam the father of Abijah, and Abijah the father of Asa. Asa was the father of Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat the father of Joram, and Joram the father of Uzziah. Uzziah was the father of Jotham, Jotham the father of Ahaz, and Ahaz the father of Hezekiah. Hezekiah was the father of Manasseh, Manasseh the father of Ammon, and Ammon the father of Josiah. Josiah became the father of Jeconiah and his brothers at the time of the deportation to Babylon. After the deportation to Babylon, Jeconiah became the father of Shealtiel, and Shealtiel the father of Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel was the father of Abahud, Abahud the father of Eliakim, and Eliakim the father of Azor. Azor was the father of Zadok, Zadok the father of Achim, and Achim the father of Elaud. Elaud was the father of Eleazar, Eleazar the father of Mathen, and Mathen the father of Jacob. Jacob was the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary, by whom Jesus was born, who was called the Messiah. So all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations. From David to the deportation to Babylon, 14 generations. And from the deportation to Babylon to the Messiah, 14 generations. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child by the Holy Spirit. And Joseph, her husband, being a righteous man had not, and not wanting to disgrace her, planned to send her away secretly. But when he had considered this, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child who has been conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Now all this took place to fulfill what is spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall be with child, and shall bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which translated means God with us. And Joseph awoke from his sleep and did as the angel of the Lord commanded him, and took Mary as his wife, but kept her a virgin until she gave birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus.